Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Tuesday, October 13th, 2020. Let's talk NFL football. Let's make some picks. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's jump into it. The Green Bay Packers, as great as their record suggests, as good as they have looked on national television, they have serious defensive problems. Now they're traveling to Tampa Bay to play a team that's very well rested. Tampa, of course, played Chicago in a Thursday night game. So, of course, Tampa has had a week and a half to prepare for this one. Tampa's defense is an underreported story. They are great against both the rush and the pass. They're building on an excellent year by the defense last year when Jameis Winston was the quarterback. Of course, Tampa also has Tom Brady, and Tampa is playing at home. I like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the home team, getting two points against the Green Bay Packers. Next, I like the Dallas Cowboys and Andy Dalton getting two and a half points over the Arizona Cardinals. Dalton must feel like a kid in the candy store, right? He's getting Cooper, Gallup, C.D. Lamb as his wide receiving core and of course the heat should be off of him in the backfield because he has Zeke running the football. Arizona, as flashy as they've looked, has a terrible pass defense. Folks, statistically, Arizona's pass defense is worse than Dallas's pass defense. Also, I know many people are thrown by the fact that Dallas has a different quarterback than they did last week. Dak was having a great year. Just understand that the Red Rifle, Andy Dalton, is a quick study. When he came in last week, he immediately established a rapport with Cooper. Also, understand you have a first-year head coach in Dallas. McCarthy obviously has won a Super Bowl in the past with Green Bay, but this is his first year with Dallas. So, it's not like the starters were that entrenched. Right? They'd only played under McCarthy for a little bit over a month. So, I don't think the change from Dak to Andy Dalton is going to have that much downside against a team that can't play pass defense. Let me add, too, that the market's overreacted here. The Dallas Cowboys are actually getting two and a half points. I like Dallas getting two and a half points over the Arizona Cardinals. Finally, I like Minnesota laying three and a half points over the Atlanta Falcons. Let's talk about Atlanta. This is one of those rare situations where a coach is fired. And the team understands that there's been a huge change. Right? Huge change. The team might be shifting overtly to a rebuilding mode. How do we know? Because in addition to the fired coach, they fired the GM. They don't even know who their GM's going to be next year. Understand. There's no one in the building to impress to make the roster next year because when they hire a GM, the GM might come in and say, look, I want my quarterback, I want my coach, I want my running back. Let's also look at the state of Atlanta right now. Julio Jones didn't play last week. Julio Jones is dealing with an injury. How many veterans in a rebuilding situation where the coach is gone, the GM is gone, the team is winless, the team has suffered some back-breaking losses in games that they should have won, including that onside kick game 
against the Dallas Cowboys. Right? How many vets are going to risk a further injury? You really think Julio Jones at this point is going to be out there giving it his all, knowing that he has an injury that's already caused him to miss time this year? Understand, too, a guy like Julio Jones comes with a price tag. It's very expensive. If Arthur Blank, the owner, decides that he's going to go into full rebuilding mode, right? If the Falcons realize that they, quite frankly, have the inside track to finish with the worst record in the league and that that might net them someone like Trevor Lawrence, then is it possible that the Falcons might decide, you know what, let's trade some of these players during the season to cut salary to get back draft picks, to get back value, right? I'm not fully convinced that Julio Jones isn't going to be on the trade market. I agree. Atlanta doesn't even have a GM to trade him. But they're still the owner. There are assistants. Make them an offer, New England, or whoever needs a star wide receiver. Take Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley looked great last week. But we know Todd Gurley right now is no longer prime Todd Gurley. Right? Still has to burst on some plays. But his carries are down. He's not your workhorse back anymore. Right? You're telling me that a vet like that in a rebuilding situation that the team didn't sign up for, right? Look at last year. This Atlanta Falcon team won a lot of games in the second half of the season of last year. I think guys like Todd Gurley came because they thought this team was about to turn the corner. Now you find out the team's rebuilding. One of the secrets to the NFL is that everyone has aches and pains, right? You have injuries you haven't even heard about, right? Guys are dealing with arthritis, problems like that. A vet could well say, you know what? I have an injury, right? If we were about to make the playoffs, okay, I'd play with it. But since we're rebuilding, I'm not going to. I think you're going to see guys starting to drop out of the Atlanta Falcon lineup. I think even Matt Ryan has to wonder if he's part of the team's future, right? Let's remember, veteran quarterbacks make a lot of money. A hell of a lot more than rookies, right? Matt Ryan might be someone in play at the end of the season. So, I think Atlanta is bad off. I think they're facing a Minnesota team that's probably about as good a 1-4 and four team as there can be. They have a good offense. They have a good pass defense. Last week in Seattle, they covered. Let's remember that. They also should have won the game. Right? At the end of the game, they leave points out there. Russell Wilson then travels the length of the field, doesn't have to do a two-point conversion because of the way Minnesota played it. Just understand that because they're going up against Atlanta's very bad pass defense, folks, it's terrible. And because Atlanta, things are different from last week. Different coach, no GM. I think Minnesota covers the three and a half points. I think Minnesota's just too talented to lose this game. While I don't like the hook, I prefer laying three and a half points to laying four points, and I get the feeling this line might move. So, that's how I see it. To sum up, I like Tampa Bay getting two points. I like the Dallas Cowboys getting two and a half points. And I like the Minnesota Vikings laying three and a half points points. Let me hear from you. If you have a different opinion or if there are other games that you think will give gamblers an edge on the casino, then I hope you leave that information in the comment section of this YouTube video. 
and my YouTube station, if you're hearing this on Alexa or Google Podcasts, is Dwyer, D-W-Y-E-R 70905. Thanks for stopping by.